Hello and welcome to another video. Today what we're going to look at is creating a connection list where we show all the information that you will need to wire your panel. That will be the source and target information of the device of the connection, so basically the DT and the pin that each side of the wire will land on, the wire number, the color and size of the wire, um, and then how it's processed with the ferrule or ring terminal part number, whatever you choose. So the first thing of course is you need Obviously you need some schematic details, otherwise how does your wires know where to land, right? So you need a source and a target. This is the source, this is the target of this connection here, okay? So that's the basics. Next, we need some, prop some settings in our project for the routing information. So for example, here in the routing connection settings, we can define the wire termination processing. So if a, if a wire lands on a screw connection, for example, I've defined it to be processed with a ferrule, push in a ferrule, um, and then I just set the default to strip. Um, and, but to make this more detailed, you'd want to go through and really fill this out uh, for all of these. For example, maybe bolt connection, we would use um, a ring terminal and things like that, right? So there's that. And then how does that information work in ePlan? Well, your 3D macros here, your placed 3D devices, they have what we call a connection point pattern. This is not a video where we're going to show how to make a connection point pattern. Um, this is something, there's other videos out there that explain that, so I would refer you to those because uh, we do, we only have so much time for this video. Let's click the three dots, and then I will go to properties, connection point pattern. Okay, there you can find the connection point pattern. We can click the three dots and then go to the, the tab there. And here we can see all the information about the connection point pattern. Okay, so let's go ahead and route the wires. So we're gonna start with just these contactors. Okay, so we routed the wires. If we double click on one of these wires, we're gonna see some information about the source and target processing ferrule. So how can we leverage this to turn that into the part number of, you know, a ferrule basically? So let's look at that in the next step. So what we're going to use, we're going to utilize block properties, right? And I'm going to test it out at this connection, or rather, we're going to jump over, we're going to jump to the schematic. So I'm going to click on this contactor device and hit F and we're gonna jump over to one of these contacts and I'm gonna focus on, let's just focus on this connection here. Here I'll configure the block property and then once I've tested it and I know that it works, we'll transfer it over to the project property so it's um, project wide at that point. So I'll double click on this connection definition. I'm gonna use these block property formats here, 50, 50 through 56, so I may need to add some more Let's go ahead and add two more, or three more rather. Okay, so let's start at 50. What I'll do with 50 is click the three dots, and the first thing I want is the size. So I'll go to the connection properties here, and this will be cross section. Um, connection, cross section, diameter, that's the property we want there. And then we want to combine that with the wire source processing. So let me go back in there. We're gonna to navigate to other representation types of the function, and then we wanna to go to 3D mounting layout, go up a level. And now we're looking essentially at the 3D connections properties. And then we'll go to connection, and then we'll see processing source. And just remember the codes here. So this one is 31051 for the target it'll be 31052. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that string down there and then I'll just change this here and that'll give us the target, right? So let's hit apply and then just preview it. Now here you see the result. So if it wasn't there, we could add it. So 16 feral, okay? So that works pretty well. Next, we need 52 to look at number 50 here. So I'm gonna click the three dots, go to connection, 
block property 50. And we're gonna send this through a replacement table. You'll see why in a moment. I'm gonna use table 50. And then 53 will be the same thing except it's looking at block property 51. Let's hit apply for now and let's go configure that replacement table. Just remember the connection that we used here. If you have trouble remembering, maybe we can draw a box around it just um, to identify it, right? So I don't want to forget which one. Okay. So we're going to go into our properties of our project. And then we're going to open up this replacement block property replacement text table 50 and click the three dots. And then here we basically are going to add every wiring type that we're going to need. So for example, 16 ferrule. And then if you know the appropriate part number, so this will be our Panduit part number for the actual ferrule there. And then you're going to add as many conditions as you'll need. Okay, so I'm going to drop all these in. I already came up with an Excel sheet where I had all my Panduit part numbers that I need. Obviously, you'll need your ring terminals and everything. This is just a small example, right? Okay, so we can exit that. And now if we double click back on this connection definition and we look at the block property results for 52 and 53, there um, we can see that clearly. And then if you want to take it an extra step, we can even do one more layer. So we'll take 54 here and we'll look at block property 52. We're going to send this to replacement text 51. And then we'll copy that over and 55 we'll look at block property 53 and we're going to use that same replacement table. This last step is basically we're going to have a regular expression that if the string doesn't include the pan dot, then we know it doesn't need a ferrule. Maybe it's a wire that just needs to be stripped. Okay. So we'll say okay to that. And then let's go back into our project properties. And we'll use this replacement text 51, open the three dots. And then here we'll use a regular expression and then we'll use this uh, regular expression here. Basically, if that string, the output doesn't include pan dot, then it's going to say whatever we type in in this output text. So we can just say not applicable. Okay. So there's that. Let's go ahead and copy those block property formats from this single connection definition. I'm gonna copy 50 through 55. go into our project and paste them there. Paste them in like that, right? Okay, so there you can see we have them and now they're project wide. So I don't need them here. I'll delete them from the individual connection definition point. So we're gonna open up a form that I have and we'll finish it up. This one here is, I just called it demo raw because I stripped out some of the things from the uh, completed one that I've already made earlier. All right, so here's the form and we need to add some things. So we need to add our termination part number and graphic for the source and the target side. So for the termination part number for the source, I'll copy the wire part number and paste it. I'll paste it down here, change it, and we'll change it to connection block property 54. The other side for the target will be block property 55. Okay, and for the termination type, we want, we're gonna copy um, something from the color here. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it off to the side so you can kind of see it. 
This property here uses this value to graphic table one. So that's gonna show you your wire color itself. And there's some formatting here that's important. So if we look, it has the alignment box activated. And that's basically what this is here. And then you'll see down here, the display type is an image and fit graphic is set to always. So we're gonna utilize that. So I'm gonna move this down into the termination type. I'm gonna take the alignment box and make it smaller. Okay, and then we're gonna change this into value to graphic four. And on the other side, we'll use value to graphic five. Change the property here. And then if we open up our form properties here, we have all these tables. So value to graphic one, these are for your wire um, images. So it links, basically it looks at this, uh, this connection color number property and it looks at the values and then we assign those values to a graphic from this graphics um, symbol library. And for example, if it's BK, we're gonna use this black wire graphic and use variant B because we want it to point down like that. And then you can just basically set up all of your possible wire colors and whatnot. Uh, three, two and three aren't being used in this particular form, so we'll just ignore those. Four and five, that's the ones we just placed for the feral graphics and in. These uh, property tables I've set up, basically all of our feral part numbers we set earlier, um, I set that to these different graphics. So for example, this one we use this yellow feral variant B. Value to graphic five we use variant D because it's pointing up, it's the target side. So we should be good to close this. Go to tools and we will generate this report. First, we need to add the form here. Now you can see we have on our source side, we have our wire ferrules that are pointing down with the part number. And on the other side, you'll see they're pointing up. So hopefully this was helpful. I uploaded this to the ePlan parts exchange. Um, so if you wanna access this, you can go to this link here and access what I just uploaded, this wire, wire ferrule demo. I uploaded this entire project, okay? So feel free to go and download that. All right, have a good one, everyone.